Hello guys and welcome to the channel. Recently I have posted a huge and very detailed video how to install Nobora 41 Linux on your computer. That was a very detailed step-by-step -step guide where I tried to explain every single detail so that anybody who wishes to install Nobara 41 Linux on his computer knows exactly what he's doing at each step. But I understand that not everybody needs such a long video. So I decided to make a shorter version of this exact video where I will guide you through each step, but we'll go through it a lot quicker. If you want to check out a full detailed version, I'm going to put a link in the description. So make sure to check it out if you want more details. All right, without further ado, let's get started. But before we start, if you're first time to the channel, please take a second to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. It only takes a second for you, but it helps me a lot to grow my channel and bring you more helpful, interesting videos. Also, if you find this video helpful, please support it with a like. I appreciate it very much and let's get started. First of all, let's find out whose Nobara Linux is designed for and who would benefit from having it. Well, if you're a gamer or a content creator or someone looking for performance optimized Linux distribution, then it might be a great option for you. Nobara Linux is the Fedora based Linux distribution designed with ease of use and performance in mind. Though, unlike Fedora, it comes pre configured with gaming optimizations, multimedia codecs, and tweaks to make your Linux experience smooth right out of the box. This operating system is tailored for gamers, video editors, streamers, anyone who needs a reliable and high performance system. Compared to Windows, Nobara is faster, more secure, and free from bloatware. Unlike macOS, it doesn't lock you into a specific hardware and compared to other Linux distros, it's beginner friendly with pre-installed gaming tools like Proton, Wine and Litris, plus drivers and codecs you normally have to install manually. So if you're ready to explore Nobara Linux and take a full control of your computer experience, let's get started with the installation process. All right, first things first, we need to download the ISO that we can actually flash or we can copy to the USB drive so we can have a live USB drive that we can use to install actual operating system on the computer. We need to make sure we get it from official website. All right, let's do that. First, visit the official Nobara Linux website at nobaraproject.org. Click on this download link. Nobara offers multiple editions like official one, the Nobara custom themed version of KDE. We will try the official one today, so I'm just gonna download this one here. Also, as you can see, there is a standard one and there is an Nvidia one. So if you have Nvidia graphics card in your laptop or on your PC, you need to get this Nvidia one because it will have proprietary drivers right out of the box. So just click on the download button accept the end user license agreement, then choose where you want to download it to, usually just download it to the downloads folder and click save. Once we got downloaded the ISO from the official website, there is still a change that during the download, the file might get corrupted. This happens sometimes, not very often, but if it happens and you don't check it for integrity, you might run into errors during the installation. So we need to make sure the file is complete and has been downloaded properly. For that, we're going to perform a verification check, which is going to only take us a few minutes. All right, let's do that. All right, the file is loaded. Let's go ahead and verify its integrity. For that, just open File Explorer in Windows. If you're using Windows 10 or Windows 11, then find the download folder, then hold shift and right click. It's going to bring up the context menu. You got to choose open PowerShell window here. Where we're going to type cert util, then space, dash, hash file, then space, then open the downloads folder and find the downloaded ISO file. Right click on it, select rename, and copy the whole name of the file, including the extension. After that, go back to the PowerShell, right click, and then space, and type SHA256 and press enter. This command will calculate the alphanumeric sequence for this ISO file. As you can see, it has calculated this number, which we need to compare to the number on the website. After you have verified the SHA-256 sum and the number matched, the ISO file is good to go. 
Nobara Linux is actually suggesting and recommending us to use Ventoy instead of other flashing apps. And it is an excellent app that I'm going to show you today. Anyway, let's go ahead and download Ventoy and create a live USB drive so that we can run it on the computer and install the operating system. All right, let's do that. Go ahead and click on this Ventoy.net link or simply open it up in another tab. Click on the downloads link. And because we're using Windows, we're going to download one for Windows. And choose download latest version, Ventoy 1.099 Windows zip. Save it to the downloads. Then go to the downloads folder. And you need to unzip it because it's an archive. Just right click. I'm using 7-zip. It's a free program. And extract files. Press OK. By the way, you can also check the integrity of Ventoy program because not only it's going to check the integrity, but it will also make sure that this file has not been tampered with and its exact file that was uploaded. So let's go through the same process. Open PowerShell and type cert util space dash hash file and open the downloads folder. Copy the archive name, then space, right click space SHA256 and press enter. There we go. And now we can compare it to the SHA checksum that is on the website. So we got 57899. Yep. And then EA00C. Yeah, looks good. Let's go to the downloads bin. Click on this Ventoy 2 disk. Insert a USB drive with at least 8 gigabyte space. I have a 64 gigabyte that I'm going to use. When you see the status ready, just click install. And it says the device will be formatted and all the data will be lost. So make sure there is no important files on this USB drive before you continue. Double check it, then press yes. All right, so congratulations. Ventoy has been successfully installed to the device, press OK. And it has opened us the USB drive where we simply need to copy the ISO file. Once the ISO file is copied, we can go ahead and close this window and remove the USB drive. And we're going to use it to install Nobara Linux on our laptop. All right, let's do that. Let's continue to the next step. And we're going to boot from the USB drive so that we can run a live boot operating system we can try out nobara linux and if we like it we can permanently install it on the computer to boot from the live usb insert the usb drive into the computer that you would like to start the live boot on start the computer to access the boot menu press the designated key for your system i'm going to put a whole list of all possible keys for any manufacturer so just press the key that is designed for your system then when you see the boot menu, select the USB drive that you want to boot from. Usually it says USB HDD or something like that. Then when you see the Ventoy menu, choose the ISO file that you want to load from. Then choose boot in normal mode. Then we see the GRUB menu. We need to select start Nobara 41, then press enter. It will start loading into the live environment of Nobara Linux. <music> Well, there we go. Nobara Linux is starting. Welcome to the Nobara Live environment. Here you can try Nobara before installing it. This is the installer that we can use to install it permanently on the computer. You can use this live environment that's running from the USB drive to explore Nobara 41 Linux. See if you like it. After you decide to permanently install it on your computer, just click on the icon Install Nobara in the upper left corner. Click on this install Nobara. It's going to open up this installer here. That's going to guide us through the installation process. We simply need to follow the on-screen instructions to choose your language, time zone, keyboard layout. Make sure these settings match your preferences. Now for the name, just type in your name. The login name will be similar. You can choose the name of the computer. Then select password. Repeat the password again. You can also use this password as the root password if you like. You can choose to log in automatically without asking for the password and press next. Now you need to select how you want to partition your drive. 
For beginners, the automatic option is recommended, which is going to be this first one, erase disk. But keep in mind, this will delete all data currently present on the selected storage device. So if you're installing it on a computer system drive that, for example, has Windows on it, it will format it, delete all the files, and you will lose all the files. So make sure to copy them before you proceed. If you know what you're doing, you can choose manual partitioning, where you can create or resize partitions, but it's more for advanced users. We're going to do the first option. And over here, you're going to select the disk that you would like to install it on. You can choose to create swap space, which is used as virtual memory when your computer runs out of physical RAM. I don't want to create it, so I'm just going to choose no swap. But if you want to know more about this specific step, check out my full video where I explain everything in detail, what it means to have swap with Hibernate, with no Hibernate, and different file systems as well. So check out the full video in the description. But we're going to continue on. For the bootloader location, make sure to put it on the main drive, such as DAV SDA. This will make sure that the system will boot properly. And then press next. Here it gives you the summary of everything you have chosen. If you want to change something, go back. Otherwise, just click install. And it says Nobara Linux installer is about to make changes to your disk. In order to install Nobara Linux 41, you will not be able to undo these changes. OK, install now. And Nobara Linux will start installing on your system. This can take a few minutes, so sit back and relax. I will just fast forward it until it's finished. Once the installation is complete, remove the USB drive and restart the computer. We need to just check mark it here and press done. This will restart the system. Once the computer is restarted, it's going to start loading from the installed operating system and not from the USB drive. Well, there we go. No bar Linux has start loading. If everything starts working, it should start loading automatically. If you get any mistakes, let me know in the comment section below. I'll try to help you fix them. There you have it. Nobara Linux is now ready to use. I hope you enjoy it. As you can see, everything is working right out of the box. Brightness, volume, internet, battery, and more. Yeah, it looks pretty good. There's your calendar. Perfect. Yeah, pretty good. There you have it, guys. That is Nobara Linux for you. Everything is working just like you saw. I'm not going to do a full review of this great operating system. You can check it out for yourself. If you want to have a review about this system, let me know in the comment section below. But it's definitely worth checking out, especially if you like gaming or if you're a content creator. That might be a great option for you guys. Well, there you have it. Nobara Linux is finally installed on the computer. You can keep exploring it, installing new apps, play games, create content. It has a lot of things right out of the box. So it is very awesome. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more helpful, interesting Linux videos. If you have comments, questions, suggestions, drop them down in the comment section below. And if you like what I'm doing and would like to support my channel, you can use Super Thanks or check out the support links in the description. I appreciate it very much, but this is it for today. Until next time, see you soon. Bye-bye.